pet toy program with Pickering Public Library and City of Pickering Animal Services. We are going to go over some quick little, not 100% professional cat toys and dog toys that you can make because if you're like me, like I just mentioned, my dog is buying for attention. I have cats walking through my space all of the time working from home now and I think that's pretty common for everyone. Um, so we, before we get started, I'm Jessica, I'm with the uh, Pickering Public Library, I have Tracy, who's also with the Pickering Public Library, and then Lindsay from Animal Services. Um, so I don't know if you wanted to give a quick little chit chat about what you do at Animal Services or yeah, anything sure. that's going on. All right. So yes, yeah, so thank you guys for coming today. So I'm Lindsay from Animal Services, and if you're not familiar with us, uh, we have a shelter that's up in Brome, and we're responsible for taking in any stray animals that come. Uh, if people, for some reason, are looking to rehome their animals, we are the place uh, that helps find them new homes. So even with COVID, we've still been moving, and I actually just did some stats. And uh, since the beginning of COVID, which I guess was about middle of March until last week, we adopted out 48 animals, which uh, is I don't know, I, I thought was pretty good considering everything that's been going on. Um, and so that's been pretty exciting. And so throughout this, we've had all the staff, uh, even though we've been closed for the public, the staff have been in there feeding and cleaning and taking care and everything. Uh, and then this program, every year, we always do a ton of things with Jessica and the library. So we just decided, you know what, we're gonna try to, to facilitate this and still offer some programs. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy. And what's going on for Petapalooza? So, uh, so right now we have a virtual Petapalooza website up. So if you haven't been over there, take a look at it. Uh, it's pickering.ca forward slash uh, Petapalooza. I feel like I'm in advertising here. <laughs> sorry, 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 guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we actually have a ton of videos. Uh, this video afterwards will going up on that. We'll have a link to it as well. But there's a ton. There's education videos about um, trying to handle your dog, dog training, um, about wildlife. There, there's a variety of different things as well as different activities and things. So there's a ton of information and stuff, and it's all different pets. And um, so that's what we're hoping people will go to. We do still have a tentative Petapalooza date for September. But uh, only time will tell as to what's going to happen. Awesome. Um, so for those watching live, you can um, type in any chat or any questions that you have in the chat or in the Q&A um, at the bottom of the screen if you're unfamiliar with Zoom. Um, I feel like more and more things are happening on Zoom, so everyone's getting a little bit more comfortable with it, which is great. Um, so today I'm going to just bring up the ta-da um I set up a second camera and I feel like I should be like on like I don't know Pinterest for like a crocheting thing or something um but what we are going to look at is just a couple of quick toys that um, you can attempt to make at home with just material that you have kicking around the house. I know uh, that's something that has changed a little bit. Um, I had so much, I feel like, material when everything started happening with COVID initially and then I started making face masks for everyone and then my material supply dwindled. So right now we are using um, things like t-shirts that were stained and awful and needing to be thrown out um, and scraps of like polar fleece and stuff that I had. But the first thing that we're going to do is a cat toy. So this is the demo that I quickly, quickly made and it is super not cute, um, but it is a no-so cat toy. And I think that I like that it is so ugly because my cats love it. And I think that proves that it doesn't have to look cute because as soon as I put it down, they started playing with it and they loved it. Um, and this is just made out of felt. So craft felt that I had cut into a rectangle um, and some stuffing that I took out of one of my dog's old toys that he destroyed because I couldn't find the stuffing that I had in my basement at the time. So 
it can be made out of anything, which is good. Um, I've decided to do a circle for this one. So if you are following along, you can absolutely do that. Um, I just drew out kind of the shape that I would like the cat toy to be, which is a big circle. And um, what we're going to be doing is making um, inc incisions, if we want to be super fancy, uh, just with a pair of scissors and cutting like half an inch, I guess, um, in width all the way up to the shape that you want. And these are going to act as the ties, so then we don't actually have to sew the, the toy itself. Um, making cat toys and stuff, I've made a few cat toys in the past by crocheting them. And cats basically just love anything that you can play with them with. Um, but with sewing stuff, I find it can be a little tricky because if you don't have a sewing machine, you're hand stitching a lot of things. And if you are stitching them and um, your stitches are loose or anything like that, they can get their nails stuck in them. So the no sew way is a good way to go to make sure that um, you're able to provide a toy that's safe for your pets because that's really important as well. Um, so what we're going to do is once you've snipped all around the toy that you want, so it could be a square, it could be a rectangle, it could be a circle. If you want to get like real fancy, you can do a star and then make incisions all around. Um, I have just regular polyfill stuffing that I found in my basement. Um, again, I've used recycled stuffing from dog toys that my dog destroyed but then also I had like scraps of fabric left over that you can use as stuffing as well um, as long as it's clean it's good to use and the one thing with the material with this cat toy is that you want to make it so that um, it doesn't fray so if you're using like a cotton or a um, I can't remember if it's woven or non-woven. Someone will know the answer, and I believe in you. But um, you don't want it to fray, so then you are left with something that isn't going to kind of fall apart once you're done. So I'm just going to tie the ends together. If you just lay the two parts on top of the, each other, you could be like real fancy and decide that you're going to put like the, the wrong sides together and if you have different fabric or materials, you can do that as well. But I'm just going to start um, by laying the two pieces of fabric on top of each other and then just going around the circle and tying the two frays together. Um, and that will make the, um, the object start to come to life. And once we get there, we can start stuffing it um, with the material that you have on hand. My dog liked to play with this too, which is kind of funny as well, that it was this little tiny cat toy and he decided that he wanted to play with it as well. Um, with the felt one, I did find that I didn't have to tie every single one. You could definitely do every other knot if you would like, um, if it's starting to become too cumbersome to tie them. Um, you can cut some of these off if you want. This is a way that people have made quilts as well, that you can uh, quilt by cutting up the edges of two blanket halves and putting them together that way. So you get an extra thick blanket. And yes, we will just continue like so until you um, get all of the knots done and then you can start stuffing. And I feel like um, when you get to that point, you can stuff it, um, I would say not super, super, super firm. Um, my cats just really like something that they can like bat around and kick. And I don't know why I picked such a, a plain black piece of fabric, but we're going to say that my cats are really emo and go with that. Um, another thing that I found in my house just randomly is a bag of catnip, which um, if you have cats that like catnip, this is a really good way that you can 
yes, non-woven woven fabrics. Do not fray. There we go. Tracy is the, the fabric <laughs> expert. I love it. I Googled it. I'm going to say you knew that. <laughs> That's like one of those Jeopardy questions that you're going to get at some point, And then everyone is going to thank you and owe you like a coffee for giving them that answer. Um, but the catnip, um, my cats all like catnip. I, my old cat didn't. Um, some cats do, some cats are not a big catnip fan. I think like weird fact, I think it's related to peppermint or something. I don't know if Lindsay would know that. I've never heard that actually. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's a weird, like it's related to something weird and that's why cats like it as well. I don't know. That'll be another fact that. Okay, that's okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Google. I don't know. My so cat. Why do cats love catnip? No, I think catnip is related to peppermint. Okay. And so cats like pe the smell of peppermint as well. But I don't. We're know. gonna learn things. I. I that's. This new is. Thing. Do you know where you can also learn things at the library? <laughs> nice little plug there. Um, but okay. What's the what's cats the like word? catnip or cat mint or catnip? Oh, so maybe catnip is like cat mint. So maybe they, perhaps they enjoy the scent of peppermint too. Oh, but it's uh, like they, a peppermint um, but they say essence. That, though. Yeah, they say that. Peppermint is not very good for cats. Oh, wow. okay. Good. So I'm like very glad cat. we Googled that. <laughs> like essential oils and stuff. But maybe because it's just what you said, Jessica. Like they're similar, so that's why they like it. But maybe yeah. the actual peppermint's too strong. But yeah, don't give your cat peppermint then. Always Google things, I feel like, is a, a responsible pet ownership thing. Is Make sure you're Googling what you can give your cat or dog before you do it. I found out recently grapes and raisins are bad for dogs. Oh. That's, uh, that's, that's something to do that with, yeah, has something to do with their kidneys or something. That and chocolate, which I'm sure you knew. And chocolate, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think uh, lilies is, is another bad one. Yeah. That's like yeah, lilies aren't stuff. great for anything. Like yeah. any pet, I don't think. Because there's lilies outside all over the place now, right? Yeah. And Lily of the Valley are so pretty, but they're so not cute for pets. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to just do a couple of more knots and then it'll be um, done enough for the cats to play with because it's what we're going for. Yeah. Simon, I understand. And if anybody makes these and you have too many or not sure what to do, we love getting toys at the shelter. So feel Ooh, free to good. donate some if, if you have too many sitting around. And yeah, our cats, would, they go crazy. I love that because we've done programs before where um, we've had kids be able to go up to the shelter and make cat toys for the cats there. Um, so hopefully that will come back once everything gets to where it is safe to do so but that's a good idea too that people can make cat toys at home and then be able to give them to you guys to use for the shelter yeah i'm gonna yeah, i'm hoping we can have we can reinstate that program soon yeah that would be so good i'm gonna put a little bit of catnip in here um my cats again they love it it's so funny we'll put some catnip in um, like different areas around the house and they just like live for it. It's like one of the only times they all get along is when there's catnip. Do they eat it or do they just like the smell and roll in it? I don't, I don't have cats, so I don't really know. They like roll in it, but then they love this. They like lick it. I feel like, mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually ingest it or I guess if they're licking it, they will, but Let's see if we can get Yeah, I don't think they actually, yeah, really eat it per se, but uh, we've had one, we've had cats at the shelter and we've had them out um, and they've just been walking around in all the cages. And next thing we know, we hear all these noises and they, they've actually broken into our catnip. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, walked that in, so like funny. it's all over the place, and the cat's just like, hi, hey, having a great time. <laughs> so, yeah. Wonder, come here, Shepard, come out. Trying to get a cat to come out to see this cat toy, but it works. It's a cute little toy. Um, Shepard is our big um, orange and white uh, tabby cat. I think he was spayed a little bit later in life because, or neutered, I guess. Um, he was a stray, but he has the puffiest, like, puffiest cheeks and is adorable. And he just loves to, like, kick the toys with his back feet. We'll see if I can <laughs> get him out here with the promise of catnap, but he also is sleeping. So I might just post a video of that later. Cause... There he is. Oh, hello. There you go. Oh, there. What is this? See, he likes it. <laughs> We're going to pretend that you love it. Oh, what a handsome man. <laughs> Here, go over here. Um, so yes, that is how you can do the cat toys. Um, again, non-woven works good, so then it's not going to fray. And just making those uh, knots uh, double knotted um, so that your cat isn't able to take them all out. Um, my dog likes to run back and forth through the curtains because he likes to be pet, I guess, by them, which is kind of funny. So the next thing that we can work on is um, a snuffle mat. Um, so this Shepard is going to come and look at again. Um, this can be used for cats or dogs. Um, Lindsay was saying that they use them a lot at animal services for the cats. Um, my dog really likes it. Um, this is not a completed mat. There are a few different ways that you can do this and um, it works really well for a way that you can help um, train your dog in terms of um, sniffing out treats. You can um, keep them busy for longer by making them sniff out their treats and work for their food a little bit more. It helps with that like prey um, instinct or just doing that extra little bit of work trying to stimulate their brain because for me when my dog was a puppy a tired puppy is a good puppy and that has to do a lot with uh them being mentally stimulated as well so he does like to play with this i'll just show you him playing with i'll show you what it what it started out as this is what we'll do first so um, this mat I just got from the dollar store. So it's a Pet Betty Crocker sink mat. Um, and what's nice about it is it does have all of the little holes in it that you can use to weave the fabric through. Um, and I will show you what it looks like when it's kind of... I just put this on the ground so he could try it, but this, um, I just put some treats inside the snuffle mat and then I put it down for him to play with and he absolutely gets excited for it and likes to dig around to try to find where the treats are. I have to use treats because my dog is not very food driven. Um, he does not get excited for any sort of um, food for like feeding time. He leaves his food all day. He just is not a very food driven dog. So I have to use treats. But I know other people who have dogs that get way excited for their kibble. You can put their kibble in the mat and it can act as a slow feeding um, tool as well. But for Simon, it just, it does not work for him. <laughs> so um, again, this is the mat as it's been working. Um, I did two layers of um, every single um, slot within the mat, but you can do it every other one if you want to have something that's a little bit easier for your dog to get through. 
um, you can use something like this, which is the plastic. Um, if you think your dog is pretty destructive and the plastic isn't going to be as safe for the dog, um, something like um, cardboard, which is not great for them to eat, but not toxic, or even sewing these onto another piece of fabric is uh, good for them. Um, that's a good, another way that you can do this. Um, this is polar fleece that I had kicking around. You can use, again, any fabric that's not gonna fray, t-shirts, um, yeah, any kind of stretchy material that won't fray with that felt would work. Um, and you can pick up like felt and stuff from the dollar store. But I've cut strips of the polar fleece. Uh, there are a few ways that you can go about doing this. The one way that I've just done is you go, I'll do it here so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but you just bring half of the fabric up from the bottom and then the other half on the other side of the little line. And you just do a single knot. We're just doing a lot of knots today. Um, and it is holding it in place fairly well. Another way, if you wanted um, it to be a little bit different, this is a little bit trickier. Um, if you have any issues with like hand dexterity, not the easiest thing, but you can fold the strip in half, um, go in one side, up the other, and then pull it through the hole that you've just made. So this way they tend to stand up a little bit more. Um, it's going to make a snuffle mat that's a little bit more full compared to these which lay a little bit more flat um, just because of the way that they're tied. So those are the two options that you can do. Um, you can vary the height if you want. So if you want something that's a little bit more, um, I feel like like a shag carpet feel like they actually have measurements for like different heights of fibers and carpets and that's probably something that if you were into you could totally know um, but the height variation would work well for this um, so this takes a little bit of time a little bit more material than you might want to use um, I personally um, have just used what's on here and have either cut it um, or have just made smaller versions of this, but it's definitely something that you can work on and work up really quick when you're like watching a movie or Netflix or you're bored, you're sitting outside in the sunshine in a pandemic and you just want to do something. You can absolutely spend that time making a snuffle mat. So um, again, for this side here that um, we're making it a little bit thinner. So I'll just do a couple more just to make sure um, I have explained what I'm doing well enough. But we're just running the fabric underneath the line of the mat. And if you had cardboard, um, you could actually just cut out squares um, yourself. I would say an X-Acto knife would work pretty well. Um, I have a thin little exacto knife that I got from the dollar store that I really like and it works well. And just to make the, the bars a little bit thicker because it is out of cardboard. So as it gets wet, it's going to get a little soggy. And unfortunately, dogs' noses tend to be a little wet um, as they're sniffing around. So it's, it's not super cute. But um, you'll want to make them a little bit thicker so they are a little bit more durable. Um, and you can go with that. Um, other sink mats are a good thing. Again, this one was just from the dollar store, but you can also pick up um, them from like Kitchen Stuff Plus. I think they have them. They're a little bit more expensive. Or you can um, hand sew or use your sewing machine to stitch. Um, in that case, you would probably fold it over, 
and then make a stitch here against a piece of fabric. So you could make a big mat that has a lot of little hiding places for the treats. And the purpose of this is just to, again, engage your pet's ability to think about food or get in that like hunting mentality where they're not just eating treats or getting treats without doing any sort of work. They're working by snipping out the treats so they are being a little bit physical in that regard but also that mental stimulation as well because that I think is what is very beneficial when you have a dog or cat that is very hyper making sure that they get the proper mental stimulation um, as you can tell I don't know if you can tell but you may see like little toys being thrown in my lap this whole time. It's because my dog has not had enough mental stimulation today and is therefore <laughs> trying to get some. So um, definitely something that um, is good for them. It kind of works as a bit of a puzzle. I know I've seen some people do big snuffle-esque mats where they've sewn different pockets in there so their cat or dog has to actually go through the pocket and pull out the treat as well. Um, I have a puzzle toy for my dog that I picked up at I think I don't know a pet store and it has a bunch of different treat compartments that he has to figure out how to open. So there's like a drawer he has to pull open. Um, there's one that's like a little container that he has to slide and then open up. So it's a good way to get them to work for their treats that they wouldn't normally use that brain power when it comes to like sitting or fetching or doing different tricks that way. So this will be the last one for this, this row um, of the snuffle mat. And you can see the difference on this side. It's a little less full on this side than it is on this side. There's more hiding spots for the treats. And that just really depends, again, on the way that you want to design it. The amount of fabric you have kicking around. Again, I was saying at the beginning, I had so much fabric in my basement and then I used it for face masks because pandemic things. So this is something that might impact your ability to make it as full or not as full as you want. Again, we have the plain old just single knot tie on this end um, or a little loop um, here as well that you can do that'll make the the snuffly bits stand up a little bit. Um, Lindsay, you said you use them a lot for the cats at the shelter. Did they need to, do they go through like a learning process for it or do they just generally jump right in? Uh, no, they kind of just jumped right in. And then some of the time they just used it actually as a mat and Aww. they just liked it. And then they would, they would sit there and they would just knead on it, which was really cute. So, oh, that's so uh, yeah. exciting. So I think like for cats, they probably last a little bit longer because the cat's maybe a little less destructive. I think depending on the kind of dog that you have, it, it might not last that long. It just sort of depends on, on what your dog's sort of prey drive is like and, and how bad they want that treat, I think. Yeah, definitely. And with that food drive too, yeah. I, I wish my dog loved this for uh, dog food, but it just... He is a, a treat dog only is what he will work for. Yeah. So yeah, any fabric for these snuffle mats, um, anything that you have kicking around the house, um, just watch that if you have something that frays a lot that you're just making sure that, I think that's something that you should do with all toys so you don't end up with like stuff like this. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, where as soon as your dog gets to the point where they've like broken the toy it's probably a good idea to take that toy away so they're not going to be eating any of the fluffy the fluff stuffing or um anything that's going to be dangerous for them so always watch your to your dog when they're playing with toys i feel like is a life lesson mm -hmm. should probably Definitely. probably do um i've seen yarn as well mixed in with this so if you're using like any bits of like thin fabric, just watch your cats as well, because 
my cats for sure if there's any yarn anywhere um they will try to eat it and that is that is a bad as well if your cat is ingesting long bits of string not great not great for them and that is something that generally i think requires vet attention and do not pull do not pull from a cat don't do that is what i have also learned not great um any questions about the little little toy or the snuffle mat or anything like that i think we've had a uh, question free which is kind of nice it means that we're either doing really well or really bad and i'm gonna pretend we're doing really well oh there it's like oh that. awesome perfect <laughs> um so we can hang out and answer any of the questions that you have about the um pet toys snuffle mats you can keep working on them if you want um i'll probably hang out until eight to just finish this one up so that my dog will actually um, get to exercise his brain a little bit more on that. Um, but we also have another cool craft idea that you can work on. I'm going to try to bring it up so then it looks like I had this planned. Um, the tire dog beds. And I will pass it to Lindsay to explain all, right. all of this lovely stuff. So, um, I don't know if you, if you guys have dogs, but if you do, uh, we have uh, recently acquired um, 15 tires, not a ton of tires, but we are sort of hoping to engage the community and hope that they'll be participate in this sort of recycling event and trying to create these really cute beds. And uh, so what you can see is you can basically take a car tire and uh, you spray paint it any color, any way that you like, and you can cut the top off, you can sort of mold it any way that you that you like as well, and then you really just fill it with a bed, uh, any type of bedding, and it, it's good for cats, good for dogs, um, but there are a ton of really cute ideas, obviously, on the internet, uh, and if you do have access, we have a video explaining everything of how to do it, and that's on the City of Pickering's Great Events. Uh, Facebook page as well as the Instagram page and um, yeah we're just hoping and maybe you guys might be interested but uh, we do have uh, have these tires they're available and they will be available on Friday from 12 until 6 up at the animal shelter and uh, if you have any questions you can ask Jessica you can reach out to, to myself as well and yeah so this is just a, an add-on is a different kind of activity that you guys could also do. Awesome. And um, I'll just put the email address too in here. If you have any questions about that, you can always um, email help at picnet.org and they will direct it to the appropriate channel as well. Or pickering.ca has all of the information um, for that project too. I'm going to stop the recording um, and then we can open up any of the mics or cameras if you guys want to hang out and talk about this. Um, we are 100% open to that or answering any questions. Um, if you have any questions for Lindsay with Animal Services, that is totally optional as well. Um, so thank you if you're watching this later. I'm glad that you were able to hang out with us and I hope that you were able to make some really cool toys for your pets and uh, we will see you at other programs. I am sure through the library we're doing other programs. Oh, I just love Patches. <laughs> patches is just the sweetest. See, Simon, you're just barking this whole time and Patches is just sweet on laps and just loving life. Um, <laughs> Maybe next time Simon will take a breather before we start the program. Um, but I will stop the recording again. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will hang out with you now in order to finish your projects.